is a rock overhang which protects everything underneath of it. So it's kind of like a front porch on your house. So you're not protected on three sides, but you do have a wall at your back and a floor and a ceiling. A cave is more like your house. So you have walls all the way around you, a floor and a ceiling. You are safe inside and you can also heat it as well. But a rock shelter wouldn't be somewhere you'd want to stay all year. And the Native Americans who used the site did not stay here all year. They used it mostly in the fall and a little bit in the spring, um, from anywhere from a couple nights to a couple weeks. Um, and they wouldn't have been building any permanent structures in here, just campfires and other things like that. Um, so this rock shelter specifically lays right alongside Cross Creek at the base of the hill. Cross Creek does empty into the Ohio River about seven, eight miles down that way. And this would have been a perfect avenue for traveling to go further inland or to go inland down to the river. Uh, creeks tend to be pretty flat land on either side. There's a lot of food sources to, to use while you're traveling. And while they were traveling, they would have seen this rock shelter and stayed here for a while, processed food, uh, just take a break for a while, anything like that. So inside the rock shelter, um, just a little bit about what's inside here. So the original overhang or drip line, which means when the rainwater drips off the right here. Uh, so it was pretty nice and large. Everything behind here would have been protected from rain and from sun and everything like that. Uh, but today, the drip line only comes to that light back there. That's just all natural erosion, nothing done by man or by us to put this building up or anything like that. The entire rock shelter is made of sandstone, so it erodes very quickly and easily, and that explains why it's slowly moving back over time. So because the roof is eroding, then there are some large rock falls. So the big square rock back there fell about five to 800 years ago, that large one that used to be up on the roof. Um, and then the large one behind me fell about 12,500 years ago. So those are the two large rock falls in here, but there are other large ones that roll down near the, the creek, and this building is actually braced on those down there, so you can still see them. But everything else that's in here, all of the sand and rocks and everything, also did fall from either the roof or the back wall over time. So the story of the excavation here starts about 1955 with Albert Miller. Uh, the Miller family owned the property that this rock shelter is on, as well as the museum property. And Albert Miller was kind of an amateur archaeologist, plus he just really loved uh, history, especially Native American history. And he knew that this was probably a site that was used by Native Americans. It just seemed perfect to him. He would have loved to come down here and dug around and found his own evidence. However, he knew that if he came down here and started digging around, that he'd be taking things out of context and that he was not a professional, so he would not be able to do the work like a professional would, and anything he found really wouldn't count to the archaeological community. So he left it alone until in 1955 when he was walking around down here and he found a groundhog hole. So the groundhog had already done what damage was going to be done by digging that hole, so he figured why not look down into that hole and see if he could find anything. He did find a couple stone points and some stone tools pretty close to the surface, that was all the evidence he needed, so he filled the hole back in and went on his own personal quest to find a professional archaeologist to come out here and do an excavation. It did take him 18 years to find that archaeologist. That was Dr. James Adebasio, who at the time was with uh, Pitt University in Pittsburgh, but uh, today he's with Mercyhurst University up in Erie. He came out here in the summer of 1973 to start the dig and the bulk of the dig was finished by 1978. Um, so a little bit into the early 80s, some things were still being done, but basically what you're looking at today was finished by the end of the 70s. So the dig takes up this space in here and kind of makes a T-shape along the back wall as well. Uh, but there are a couple sections that are waiting to be excavated for a, a future dig. Um, this large area over here is still at ground level, uh, it has only had the sod removed, other than that it hasn't been touched, so that's waiting. And then there's also a section behind this rock here that is still at ground level as well. Okay, so there's a video I'm going to play for you guys, it's about 15-20 minutes long. It'll tell you a lot more than I just told you about the, the rock shelter. You get to hear about the geological forming of the area. You'll get to hear from Albert Miller and his
his love for archaeology and how uh, he discovered what he did down here. And then you also hear from Dr. Adivasio on how they did the, the actual dig and what they were able to find and what Metacroft really ended up meaning to the archaeological community. What's uh, really interesting is the fact that people were camping from the time they walked in here mm -hmm. and, and, and they, as they went down deeper, they went through all the different archaeological periods uh, that have been known and found items until they went all the way down to about 11,500 years where uh, they uh, people, the archaeologists, knew that there were, that's when the people came into North America, and that was the accepted theory at the time. They said, okay, well, let's, we're, we haven't hit bedrock, which here is shale. So they kept on going down deeper, and they still found things. And they started carbon dating them, and they were finding that they were 14,000, 15,000, 16,000 years old. And that's like that basket that they saw, they had a put the plastic in it before they could pick it up. Mm -hmm. uh, those are things that were so old that it was just amazing. And of course, he published this, uh, that was Dr. Adivasio, and the archeologists at the time said, no way, can't be. Everybody knows it's 11,500, don't confuse us with facts. Yeah. Turn some lights on. So that became a real problem for him. So, uh, for many years, uh, he touted what was here, and they kept saying that it must have been contaminated, checked for contamination. It must have, uh, water uh, must have trickled in and carried uh, coal into the area. Well, there is no coal anywhere, uh, so that was not a problem. Must have been flooded. Well, let's see, the creek is how far down there? <laughs> no. Uh, the glaciers must have uh, caused the problem. No, the glaciers uh, didn't come down this far. Uh, the, the last glacier came down uh, to about Moraine State Park. You may mm -hmm. know that it's about mm -hmm. 50 miles north here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the Moraine is where the, all the gravel carried by the front of the glacier, it just drops mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. makes a big hill. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's as far as it went. And 16,000 years ago, it had already receded to about the southern shore of Lake Erie, where that is now. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't a factor either. So they weren't believing them at all until they started finding other sites that dated back to 16,000 years too, like in Cactus Hill, Virginia, another site in South Carolina, another site in Texas. And they've even found another site on the southern tip of South America, way down across Antarctica, and that was frozen area there, and they dug that up, and they found items that were dated to 16,000 years old. Then they started believing and it took many, many years. He wrote a book uh, called The First Americans. Uh, it, it's in paperback and uh, they have it up at, at the visitor center. You might be interested in that. And it, it shows the, uh, the history of uh, him coming here and, and what he found and all the problems he had. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I read it uh, a couple of years ago. I'm reading it again. It's a, it's a fascinating book. Uh, the, uh, one of the things is uh, you'll see all these tags here. Uh, those are tags that they put there to show different strata that they found. And they can determine the strata by uh, the amount of materials that are holding those sand grains together. Uh, sometimes it's clay, sometimes it's other, other uh, elements uh, that they can find. And so they keep track of those because if they find a, uh, a spear point, and it's, okay, a spear point at that time was stone. Okay, how old is it? Well, we'll check the carbon dating. No carbon. How old is it? So it becomes a real problem. So what they do is by keeping track of uh, the strata, uh, they find, okay, it was in this strata, and they, uh, they look further until they find something like a seed or something, and they analyze that, and they find out what that age was well, in the same strata, so that spear point must be from the same age. So that's, that's how they can relate it. Today, we have ion dating, and they can uh, evaluate most stones uh, for their age. So uh, this is the types of things that he was looking at uh, here, uh, the age of things. And as he went through and found all kinds of different items, they found 20,000 artifacts. Mm. 
-hmm. What's an artifact? Artifact is uh, something that's man-made, like a, a stone tool, uh, like uh, arrowheads or, or spear points, mm -hmm. uh, bone tools, uh, also uh, things uh, like uh, the baskets there said that they found and a number of other items. So they got 20,000 of those that they've uh, looked at. Also, one million animal remains, oh. mostly bones. And so uh, every little bitty bone they found uh, was one. So they get to a million real quick. And uh, what, somebody asked me, uh, well, what are all these bones from? Well, all kinds of small animals. I think the biggest one was elk. They should have had elk in this area. Oh. But then there's then a white-tailed deer. Uh, was in that, so it was pretty close to the same size. And, but, and they were, the people that came here were, were uh, uh, small game hunters. And so there's all kinds of small game that were in here. And somebody asked me, are, are, were there any dinosaurs? No, that's, that's millions of years ago. But there was one animal that is no longer around. It's extinct. And that was the passenger pigeon. Mm -hmm. He found bones mm -hmm. to 810 passenger pigeons. Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, they must have loved eating passenger pigeons until they found bones of owls and turkey buzzards with them, and they said, ah, that's what's eating yeah. the passenger pigeons. Probably during the wintertime when there's no humans around. Yeah. They were in here. They also found uh, 1.3 million plant remains, and that's mostly seeds from, from different uh, plants around, uh, berries uh, like raspberries and hackberries and uh, a number of other berries, and also uh, shell fragments from uh, acorns and walnuts and other nuts like that too. So this is what they were finding. Now, I said that we didn't find any bodies in there, but we did find a finger bone. Mm -hmm. Now the fact that they were sharpening their spear points here mm -hmm. and they found the finger bone, well you put that together. How, <laughs> how old was that? How old was it? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I'd have to go look that one up. Okay. And uh, they they did. I know one thing. They looked for uh, DNA and they couldn't find any in it. Okay. And also they found two teeth, human teeth. They were well worn molars hmm. in the back teeth. Therefore, they were bringing older people with them. So they're they're bringing the whole families. And, you know, the baskets that were woven by women, and, and so they were bringing the whole families up here, and. Uh, there was a, a girl about 11, 12, she asked, uh, what color were the teeth? Were they white? I said, no, they were gray. Did they have cavities? No, nope, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the point was is that uh, the, pe the people that lived here, or, or actually came and camped here, actually lived about seven and a half miles down Cross Creek, and that's Cross Creek down there, which is, uh, runs into the Ohio River. And down there uh, is probably where they lived, down the flats there. And they were coming up this way, uh, sometimes in the spring, mostly in the fall, when the, a lot of berries are uh, coming out and the, the nuts are coming out. And the animals are coming down to the stream for water and these, uh, these nuts and such, so they can hunt the, nut, hunt the animals and collect the berries and that. So they were walking up here. And it's easier to walk along a, the stream here because this goes up gradually compared to up and down the hills around here. Mm -hmm. So that's what they were doing. And they, you know, they spot this, and this was a great campsite for them. It's been, what, two days, two weeks, whatever, depending on, on what they were doing. They also found a, a corn cob uh, in there. It was about this big, had only eight rows on it, and they dated that. It came out to 300 BC. Oh wow! He said, "Whoa, <laughs> that's old." And by the way, where were they? Where were they uh, growing this corn? You know, there's no flat area around here. Well, the, probably down where your home was, uh, on the flats around the Ohio River. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing food with them. They weren't, uh, couldn't live totally off the land. They bring some stuff that they were raising. So this is, this is what they were running across. And as they were uh, going down here, and they started over on this side and moved uh, in this direction, they found more and more uh, items uh, and 
and the deeper they went, in the 16 feet uh, deep, they, uh, they found uh, older and older items as they went down. And because they were all in a strata, it, it was all like pages in a book. And the, what made that is that people would come in here, they'd camp, they'd make a fire, they'd leave items uh, like the seeds uh, or uh, shells or maybe a, a spear point that was too, uh, too small. Or, you know, they just leave can them there. Can you see any campfire area in there now? Uh, Down below? They, they, uh, I'll show you some when we go up. Oh, okay. And uh, yes, they do. They can find them. And, uh, but uh, they, so they, they leave stuff behind and then uh, say the next year or next two years, maybe they don't come back for a year, but they come back here and because the sand keeps falling, before they put this roof up here, and the sand keeps falling, uh, it covers up all of that. And so it stays where it fell and nobody disturbs it. And that until back in 1973 or 70s, uh, they come in here and do the archeology span and they find all these things. And again, as they go down, gets older and older. Until they get down to the shale, which is the bedrock, which is way down there, and uh, that's the end. That, so 16,000, that was all they ran across. One person asked me, well, could they have found older? Well, there may have been older, but they weren't here uh, because uh, they didn't find anything else. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, the young lady showed us the drip line was seated. Was the back wall always the black back wall? In other words, it get more sh less deep? Good as question. The centuries progressed. Let me. Uh, first of all, the first question is: the back wall was always the back wall based on when it washed out, and then the stream went went away. Mm -hmm. But the overhang came to about here, such that the the drip line means that if you're on this side of the drip line and it's raining, you get wet. If you're on the other side, you don't. It, you, it's the porch up there. Well, uh, this rock fell in about 12,000 12, years, 1,500 years ago. Wow. And so it moved the drip line further back. And I'll show you up there how, where the drip line is now. Mm -hmm. You can't see it because of this structure. This was all built in 2007 and occupied in 2008. Uh, another question while we're here is, what's that black line along here? You see this black line, you see it uh, right over here, there's a black, black line too. And what that is, is if you look over on this side, that's a remnant of the roof that they had over all of this while they were doing their, their archaeological dig. Mm -hmm. And the black line is the tar between the tar paper roof and the rock, just to seal it off. Mm -hmm. And that was to keep the students, and these were students that were coming in here uh, for five years uh, every summer, and they would uh, come in here and it, it would keep the sun off of them, the rain off of them, and this roof came way down here like this, right, right into here, there's the top of the roof right there. And they were down uh, digging in here uh, with their razor blades sometimes. And uh, so uh, they had long uh, fluorescent bulbs under there and spotlights too in order to see what they were doing underneath that roof. Uh, now, uh, people want to see what's going on. They got a big roof in the way. You can't see anything. So. Uh, they put this up in 2007, and he said that he's not taking down that roof until they're done. He doesn't want any of this audiovisual stuff falling when they're putting it up. And the workers say, oops, and then something falls. Mm -hmm. So, at the end of 2007, when they're complete, he says, are you done? He says, yes, we are done. Everything's attached. Okay, now take down the roof. And they just left that as a remnant. So, in 2008, now we... We can uh, come up here and see more of the dig. It's more comfortable. Audiovisual stuff to, uh, tells the story. So that's that's how that developed. Okay, let's go up above. 70s vintage computer. First computer they had didn't have a monitor. So how did it work? Well, uh, you typed, and the dot matrix printer, which they don't make anymore, told you what you were typing. Eventually, they, they did get a monitor, but uh, that's how they started. And this was one of the first digs where they used a computer. So they want to send a couple of pages of data 
that they were recording, uh, developing here, mm -hmm. and send it to uh, the main frame in, at the University of Pittsburgh. Is uh, where right here is where the groundhog hole was, hmm. and you can see the slope here of the. This is original soil, uh, soil or sand. Mm -hmm. This came up here, so right about here is where it hit the back wall. So the groundhog hole was right here. Uh, Alvin, uh, Albert Miller uh, uh, saw that uh, there were some items in there. In fact, he came up with a bone knife. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so he covered that up, didn't tell anybody about it until he got an archaeologist. And so that was in 55 he found that. They started digging in 73. Patient man. Mm -hmm. Now, if he would have told anybody, they would have been in here with picks and shovels, you know, mm -hmm. thinking there's gold or something, which mm -hmm. there isn't. Never, never did find anything. Uh, most of it's just remnants that people uh, would uh, throw away mm -hmm. after they're done, they're done camping, mm -hmm. essentially. Uh, and uh, the original drip line, if you can see the line that's uh, flowing over here, and then these, these two rocks came down, I mentioned those, and they then allowed it to form the, uh, the present drip line. And you can't see it because of the roof here, but when you go down to your cars, when you get down to the foot of the steps, uh, turn around, you can see the, the overhang from that point of view. And uh, so it, this is where it was and still is, and uh, the, okay, uh, right here, on this platform right here, is where they found uh, the remains of people, people having a campfire recently. That's where they, they found a, a bunch of beer cans uh, around the campfire they had put out. Well, they're not interested in beer cans, so they got threw those away and started digging. And what did they find? Hmm. More beer cans. Uh, this time they were rusting, they were older, so pe people were camping in that same site site uh, a long time ago. So they're still not interested in beer camp, by the way. So they grab it, gather those up and throw those away. And they dig deeper, and this time they find gin bottles mm -hmm. from the 1700s. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> and not only that, they find glass arrowheads made from some of the gin, gin bottles that the Native Americans were making. Oh. Uh, Native Americans were very good at uh, doing all kinds of crafts. and. Uh, nice arrowhead that they could use for hunting out of glass, they, they could do that. Uh, so, as they dug further down, they just kept finding more and more items. And so that's where, where they first started. Now the, the trench that they started digging, you know, all the way from the back wall, they dug all the way along here. They actually started right at about in this area here and started going down. So, uh, they, that's when they really realized what they had here. They did not expect uh, to go so deep or to find as many items as they did. And then uh, as they went on, they, they went deeper and deeper in this section here, the deep hole. That's where they went all the way down to bedrock. The, let's see, uh, the Miller Point, uh, was was found way down here, mm. and uh, that dated uh, back to around 14, 15,000 years old, and uh, the so the uh, the site uh, went. They kept on digging until around 1978, and that's when they stopped. So figure on an average of uh, three months out of the year. Uh, like June, July, August, uh, and sometimes uh, they didn't get here until the middle of June, sometimes they uh, didn't leave until the, uh, into October, but on an average of about three months, so we're talking about five years, three years, so all of this was dug out in 15 months. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the areas uh, that they have uh, set up for the future, uh, was right over there and right here, and uh, that was in the 70s. Well, this is the future. No, they don't have any plans yet to <laughs> do with anything. Uh, the reason they really left those is because the, uh, these big rocks here, this one and this one over here, 
would have to be supported before they dug up here. So they, they decided that they couldn't support that, it would be too costly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing here is, here is a, uh, a fire uh, pit right there, and that's a mollusk shell right there. The mollusk shell down there, it's a freshwater um, shellfish, cooking them and eating them. That fire pit dated uh, to 1000 AD. Uh, there's a deer bone, a deer bone here, and now uh, this big piece is a rock, and right on top of the rock is the rib of a white-tailed deer. So they were uh, hunting deer and eating them in this area too, and that dated to the mid 1700s, George Washington time. And no, George Washington was not here, but <laughs> that's that dates uh, of his time there. So uh, with that, uh, we'll bring this, uh, this tour to an end. But there, you can ask me any questions. Where can you see all the artifacts? The artifacts are all up in Mercyhurst University, which is uh, ideas of where to put them here. Because they'd have to be in an air-conditioned area and under lock and key and all that, then we don't have anything right here. So they're still planning that. So they're not, they're not around. Mm -hmm. They're quite knowledgeable. Oh, Thank you. The question as to where the Miller homestead was, is? Um, the actual homestead, uh, I don't really know how to, you'd have to ask her up, uh, ask for Fran. Is up. it near here? Uh, yes, uh, this, is, this was the Bancroft farm, and, mm -hmm. and this section here, uh, where the, the museum is on, is on. Albert and Delvin Miller. This was their farm. Their family's ancestors lived here. It was their um, plan to save things from the past so that we could enjoy them today. They started with the 1800s village that we have. The log house was their ancestors. They brought down from the main part of the farm. They took it down pieces and they put it back. The schoolhouse was on the back roads. The covered bridge came from Pine Bank in Greene County. That's what opened in 1969 was the 1800s village. Through the years, they kept adding things. Delvin, one of the brothers, was also a harness racer. He helped start the Meadows Racetrack, which is very not too far from here down on the casinos now. He, with his um, earnings that he made through horse racing and horse raising, he helped start this place and sent money back to Albert, and Albert was the person who ran the business. He would put more buildings up and brought more antiques and kept just adding. Albert was also an outdoorsman. He loved going for walks outside. He loved nature. He planted half of the trees that are all around here. He was also an amateur archaeologist. He was out walking one day and he discovered what is now known as the oldest continuous site in North America, the Meadowcroft Rock Shelter. You're going to be going down there. You're going to watch a two minute video on the rock shelter. After it's over, you will get back into your vehicle. You will go down that steep hill you came up. You know how you came up the hill? You're going back down that hill and you will turn left. Right along the road was another parking lot. The gate may have been closed when you came past it, but it will be open now. Drive in, park, and walk up the 60 steps to the rock shelter. Make sure you all have your red stickers on because the staff down there will be looking for your stickers. If you do not want to walk the 60 steps, I have a video over there that's about 20 minutes long that shows you a tour of the inside of the rock shelter and gives you all the information. But if you could go up the steps, I think you'd enjoy it down by the creek. It's very pretty. The program down there lasts about 45 minutes. You're driving your own vehicle down there so you can stay as little or as long as you want. You're welcome to come back up here afterwards. Uh, we're open till 5 o'clock, so make sure you get to the Indian Village and the, and the Frontier in the 1800s. Just to let you know, too, there are no facilities down there. The only restroom is directly across the hall here. And there is no food allowed in the rock shelter. Do you have any questions about anything? So we're going to watch the two-minute video, then get into your vehicle and drive to the rock shelter.